Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes Britain's best BMBS, and why now is the time to stay in them. Alarm over oil spill risk in English Channel as Putin relies on 23-year-old tankers. Live South Africa v Tonga score and updates from the Rugby World Cup. ASX set to open lower as Wall Street closes September with more losses. Wallabies beat Portugal to stay alive at the Rugby World Cup. Britain's best BMBS, and why now is the time to stay in them. Telegraph. Alarm over oil spill risk in English Channel as Putin relies on 23-year-old tankers. Telegraph. The risk of an oil spill in the English Channel is increasing due to Russia's reliance on aging tankers, analysts have warned. Russia uses these tankers, known as the Shadow Fleet, to bypass the G7's price cap on oil exports. Experts fear that this increases the likelihood of an environmental disaster. Most of Russia's Shadow Fleet does not have insurance for oil spills and has not been inspected in the last three years. The number of global tanker collisions has increased this year, reaching a five-year high. Ships transporting oil from Russia's port of U.S. Teluga travel through the North Sea and the English Channel. Live South Africa v Tonga score and updates from the Rugby World Cup. Telegraph. South Africa is hoping for a bonus point win against Portugal to keep the pressure on Ireland in the Rugby World Cup. Despite their recent loss to France, South Africa remains hopeful, as they have experienced success in the past after losing the opener. The Springbok selection includes interesting choices, such as Dion Ferry at hooker and Grant Williams on the wing. Andre Pollard will also be making his first appearance of the year after recovering from an injury. It will be Sia Khaleesi's 50th time captaining the Springboks. Tonga, on the other hand, has faced difficulties in their preparations for the World Cup and may struggle to deliver a surprise. Wallabies beat Portugal to stay alive at the Rugby World Cup. ABC. The Wallabies defeated Portugal 34-14 at the Rugby World Cup, keeping their hopes of qualifying for the quarterfinals alive. After falling behind early, the Wallabies capitalized on a yellow card for Portugal to score quick tries and regain control of the game. They secured a bonus point victory with a fourth try in the second half, and despite playing with only 13 men for part of the second half, they only conceded one try. The Wallabies now need Portugal to beat Fiji in order to advance to the quarterfinals. This seaside town is so popular that employers are turning an aged care home into accommodation for their staff. ABC. Businesses in popular Australian tourist destinations are struggling to find suitable housing for their staff due to high demand and limited availability. Hotels, ski resorts, and other businesses in areas such as Sorrento and the high country are finding it difficult to secure accommodation for their workers. This is particularly problematic during peak seasons when the demand for staff is high. In response, some businesses are taking matters into their own hands and creating housing themselves. They are renting properties and refurbishing buildings to provide accommodation for their workers. Hospitals and other large employers are also getting involved in the housing market to attract and retain staff. The lack of affordable housing near inner-city hospitals, for example, is a major issue. The Australian Housing and Urban Research Institute, AHURI, is calling for more housing initiatives and programs to address the problem. The shortage of housing in popular tourist areas not only makes it difficult for businesses to find staff but also impacts the overall viability of these areas as attractive destinations. House prices on track to hit new record high, continuing to frustrate first home buyers. ABC. Australian house prices are set to reach a new record high despite a gradual increase in properties for sale and higher interest rates. CoreLogic housing data revealed that prices rose 0.8% in September, with Adelaide, Brisbane, and Perth leading the way. The median price of a home in Sydney is now 1.11 million Australian dollars, $780,000, $776,716 Australian dollars in Melbourne, and $691,591 Australian dollars in Adelaide. The situation continues to frustrate first-time buyers, with the market experiencing an extraordinary mismatch of supply and demand, according to Eliza Owens, head of research at CoreLogic. Wallabies defeat Portugal but World Cup hopes hang by a thread. The Sydney Morning Herald. The Wallabies have kept their slim hopes of making it to the last eight at the Rugby World Cup alive after a 34-14 bonus point win over Portugal in their final pool match in France. 
In the 47th minute, Fraser McRae dived over for Australia's fourth try and an all-important bonus point that has pushed the Wallabies, 11 points, above Fiji, 10 points, into second spot in their pool. The only way the Wallabies can sneak into a quarterfinal is if Portugal, ranked number 16 in the world, beat Fiji by eight points or more during their final clash on Sunday, Monday 6 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Airbnb guest who rented a room tied up, robbed Georgia homeowner at gunpoint, police say. The Toronto Star. A man who rented a room through Airbnb in Georgia ended up robbing the homeowner at gunpoint. The homeowner called the police after the armed renter fled the scene with his wallet. The homeowner reported that the renter had bound his hands and feet with zip ties before stealing his wallet, which contained cash and credit cards. The police have identified a suspect and obtained an arrest warrant for charges including armed robbery and aggravated assault. No arrests have been made yet. PwC faces further scrutiny over tax scandal as global boss hits town. The Sydney Morning Herald. PwC is expected to be called before a federal Senate inquiry for the first time over fresh allegations of wrongdoing that are also being reviewed by the Treasury. Last week, the firm agreed to governance changes after a review by former Telstra boss Ziggy Switkowski. PwC also released a statement of facts on two independent investigations into the tax scandal. These investigations are also subject to criminal investigation. The statement details alleged breaches of confidential treasury and tax briefings, with information being shared within the firm despite partners signing non-disclosure agreements with Treasury and the Australian Tax Office. The Senate committee will soon finalize a list of attendees to appear at its final hearing on October 12. PwC's global chairman, Bob Moritz, is set to fly into Australia this week with a message for clients that the tax scandal is over, and it is time to get back to business. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.